Hi everybody, I am Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports and my next guest after a very vigorous workout today, uh, you will recognize the face, uh, the former world champion. You can see him fighting on Saturday on Fox. He's going to be fighting Jay Lee on Love, none other than Peter Quillen. How are you, my friend? Kevin, how you doing? It was a pleasure catching up with you right after that workout. But now, you know, to see a smiling face like yours is always welcoming. Well, you uh, you were one of the best in the world. Uh, the last time a lot of people saw you fight was when uh, you were in the ring with Danny Jacobs. I know you fought uh, one time and had a win since then. Uh, Daniel Jacobs was kind of a surprising outcome. Not that you lose to Danny Jacobs. You know, both of you were elite fighters. It was the, the first round KO. Um, you've been pr largely gone from boxing uh, for two and a half years. What, what's been up? Uh, we, we You know, you fell off the radar. Well, Kevin. Man, you know, I'm, I'm married, you know, I'm, I'm, I was newly married at that and I had a, uh, like a kid and the experiences with being married was very difficult for me to understand because I never had good examples growing up about how to have a wife. Number one. Number two, I had to change my, my team. I went out to the West Coast for a little bit to train under the watchful eye of um, Virgil Hunter. Mm -hmm. So I was out there and I basically was like, I need to renew who I was as a person. Not to say that I lost myself fully. Um, but the, 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 just the, after the post fight mess of, you know, family and people, you know, the craziest thing is I was so fearless as a kid, right? You start having enough time to think about stuff and think of where you are. You lose a little bit of that fearlessness. And, um, I think I lost it because I was letting people get the best of me by giving me bad advice and, and, and you know, nothing was attached to that advice. So. I just basically had to just renew myself, find out what kind of man I was and, and what kind of husband I wanted to be, what kind of father I wanted to be to my children. You know, my wife moved out the house. Wow. You know, my wife, you know, we I turned down the house and she got so upset and, um, you know, had all these different people, unfamiliar faces. Never told myself in a, my whole career in boxing I would ever have like an entourage. Next thing you know, it was like an entourage and I didn't know where they came from and I didn't know how to get rid of them. Hmm. They, you know, the one thing I think people forget is about professional athletes is how much the real world affects going to work. And somebody who's working in a factory or a mechanic or something, you know, the world doesn't see what we do. And in your case, everybody sees what you do, your your strengths, your weaknesses, the good and the bad. Um, so do you feel like when you went into the Jacobs fight that night that you carried the weight of personal issues on your shoulder into the ring? That, uh, the team, you know, the team I was working with, it was like kind of dilemmas in the camp. You know, I had a little issue with on the, on the, the opening, the media workout day, they, the two trainers that I had was about to fight, you know, mm. played, you know, that, that may have, and then working with a, a conditioner trainer I hired that wasn't a good one. He was good as far as work the work and what he was doing, but it's just as far as, you know, the, the worst thing to understand about boxing right is because sometimes a boxer needs people to help him give him some type of strength but that strength can never come with money that that strength got to come with a belief in the person mm. and it's hard to find people that believe in you when you pay them money yeah and that isn't that strange uh, how that always works that way yes so yeah a little bit of me uh was taking a lot of stuff into the fight um i got some advice to use from my corner how to to look at this fight and now that i'm out of that moment i look back and say maybe that wasn't the best advice i was i was able to get i you know one of the reasons i always liked writing about you and talking about you in addition to the fact that you were a great fighter was that you were so brutally honest all the time and i i went back and i looked up a story i did when you were talking about you know the the high and the low of your uncle passing away and your and your son being born and i just wanted to read you a little bit of this quote because it seems like it's applicable to where you are right now you said then i this was in 2015 i wasn't in a mental state of mind to go fight you had turned on a fight with matt korboff at that point i had had this great emotional uplifting event when my baby was born but at the exact same time i had to deal with the horribly bad emotions of knowing my uncle had cancer and we were going to lose him i still take that hard it was hard to witness someone who was so close struggling and passing away from an agonizing disease like pancreatic cancer i wasn't in the right mindset to get ready for a fight do you think that that you know that quote even though it was about a specific person summarizes the last couple of years that you know you had some issues that with your wife and with people on your team that you had to you know get straightened out before you would be able to clear your head and go in there and box the way peter quillen can do to be brutally honest with you 
I started to see these dark moments in my life and I started to think, you know, what is the easiest way to deal with this? And I would say, man, you know what? Jumping out the window. Mm -hmm. I was living on the 42nd floor, the penthouse floor. And I was thinking about jumping. I never had these thoughts. I would have never thought these type of thoughts would come to my mind. Um, I, I hated to be, be around people. I just felt nobody, I could relate to anybody, like family, friends, nobody. I just felt like everybody was against me. Um, I just felt really in a bad, dirty, you know, since it was right after the Hassan and Don fight, a lot right. of those things started to hit. You know, people started, you know, even when my uncle passed, I paid for his whole funeral. I wasn't able to go and my family is fighting. Mm. They're fighting. They, they, didn't, they I got them too from, he got buried in Chicago. And I, I got him buried. I couldn't make it to his funeral. They're fighting when they didn't drop one penny. Mm, that's really rough. So that was rough. And then, you know, just the, just the, just the, all the dark places that I was just, I was just in so many, I, I went to go see this therapist and man, I started telling him all this stuff. And, um, I told him, I said, man, I started seeing these visions. I said, man, this is what I've been seeing. I've been seeing like these type of vision. They very dark. It's, it is almost feeling like it's the devil. And he told me, and he was like, wow, after my first session, he said, wow. He said, let me let you know something, Peter. The battle is real, but so is the victory. Mm, interesting. He said that, I did not understand how that touched my spirit, how it touched my heart. It just made me feel like, yeah, I definitely got to go see this guy again. And that's when I started to work on these all these problems that I had. And I, I dealt with them instead of dealing with every problem at the same time, just like a fight, you can't fight the whole fight at the same time. You got to fight one round at a time. So I took one of these problems and tried to eliminate as much as I can. And I'm still eliminating them problems, them problems off my off, off, off my hands. That, I mean, I'm glad to hear that. And we should add anybody who has had similar thoughts like you had at that time should seek help. There's always somebody there for you. We don't want to have anybody harm themselves or do that. So that, you know, there is ways to get help yeah. like like people Peter did. We just, we just, um, I was in the gym and we had a guy that works, a young kid, 11 years old, his brother committed suicide. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So those suicidal thoughts, you know, when it crosses your mind, you know, you really got to seek help and seek the help right away. Now I may have a different advice for that. You know, I, I had to go right to the source, which is God. God is the source of all life. And I went to him and I started to get my answers the way I wanted them. And I just learned that, you know, you have to stand strong. And most of the times, if you realize, everybody got their own answer inside of their own heart. That's it. So you now found God. You have peace in your life. You you understand what's going on. How do you think that impacts you as an athlete? I mean, that's the pe people are going to tune in on Saturday to watch you fight. Uh are they going to see the old Peter Quillen, the guy that went out there, won a world title, won uh, 33 uh, in, out of his first 35 fights? Or is it going to be a different guy that we see? Well, definitely you're going to see, you know, as you've seen in the loss when I had Danny Jacobs, I think I ever, I gained more fans for my post-fight interview than me always winning. So I learned in that situation that you can lose on a worldly level, but with God, you can always win. He finds a way for you to always win something. I learned some valuable lessons, and you will see, you know, the hard training athlete, Peter Quillen. But, you know, you know, I don't think in my career I try to stay away from controversy. Um, I try not to eat my own words. I try to say things, you know, like you hear a guy, I'm going to knock him out. I really I don't talk like that. You know, that's not the way it is. For me, just letting the will of God happen and more so you, um, mostly is to involve my love into the sport and being impactful. My, my, my story now is going to be used for God and more of an impactful way for people who, you know, battling, um, you know, depression thoughts, um, people that come from a broken home, never seen their, their parents ever hug, you know, never having your mom say they ever loved you and show you that you can, how you can overlook those things, how you can jump over those hurdles and still become who you want. And still did, forgive your mom and still forgive your parents and, and tell them that you love them. Did those things happen to you, Peter? Yes, every one of those bits. And listen, now, you know, since the beginning of this whole ride and this thing, people always heard bits of my story and to always say, Peter, you should write a book because I, it's certain things, dark things that happened to me by family members that, you know, it shouldn't happen to any kid that, you know, um, you know, I overcame those things, those thoughts. I was dealing with those thoughts as a kid growing up that, you know, that 
but that didn't that didn't happen. I tried to make it look like that never happened to me, but it did. And um, you know, hopefully one day I can maybe partner up with somebody, write these things in a book, and maybe it can it can help those who struggle with the things I struggle with. Father, my father is from another country. No matter how many people will look at me like a black man, my dad is from Cuba, born and raised. My father has four different women um, um, with kids. We, it's eight of us, nine with the, including the son that my mom has. So it's nine kids that we have. And my dad got four different women, but two different wives, one in Cuba and one in the United States being my mother. So, you know, um, my, growing up, I'm the, the only one in my family on both sides that actually got married and had my kids with the same wife. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I got my kids within a marriage, you know, I'm just thankful that I got to do the things. I'm the only one of my dad's kids to meet all my siblings all across the world. My brother in Spain, my sister in Cuba, my other three brothers in Cuba, my brothers in Michigan, you know? So, you know, from what I accomplished outside of the ring, it's always going to be great, you know, great to me. Getting my GED was probably one of the greatest things. I remember failing the first time because I just wasn't in a state of mind and I, and I wanted to, me and my wife was fighting me. I left the house and booked the room and studied the went to the Bronx. And then when I went to the Bronx, I did this GED. I felt good about it and um, went back home to try to make up my wife. My wife, uh, me and her got in an argument and basically she was basically moving out the house. So it was like things collapsing on me. It felt like all my walls was collapsing at me at one time and I couldn't do nothing to stop it. Mm, that is really rough. Well, let's let, let's end with this because I know I don't want to take any more of your time, and I'm so sorry that you've been through a lot of this. Um, the, are you going to campaign a super middleweight? And have you looked at the champions? And do you, you know, do you have a, a goal? Where do you want to go? Assuming you, Jay Leon loves a formidable opponent. Uh, if you can beat him, that would say that you're a factor at 168. Who are you looking at? Well, it's hard to look at all those guys. Those guys. Some of those guys I know for a long time, like Anthony Durrell, it's like me and his brother is like, we, we like a big hat. We like family, you know, uh, you know, David Benavidez, um, I always been a big supporter of his. He actually in early part of my career, um, you know, before he was even pro, he used to be a sparring partner of mine. And what a like, great fighter he is now. Yes. Caleb Plant is another guy, a rough story, you know, being where he from helped me out to get, uh, you know, ready for a fight with Danny Jacobs and we, friends ever since so i think all all together you know this is a business at the end of the day i may say i want not want to fight those guys and those guys say i want to fight them and you know i, I guess i had to cross that road when i get to it i know this is a business i'm gonna stay structured behind it i'm gonna stay focused and keep my obedience with god so then you know god can steer the career the way that i can have peace with it so you know so be it you know i'm always going to step out there and put my best foot forward and be the best boxer i can be and you know about it, and Kevin about the things that I've been through. Let me let me give you something. Okay. Right. You go to Africa, you in the desert, right? You see kids starving. They starving. They hot, and they hardly have any food, right? Can you still find a kid that'll be able to smile there? I bet you could. All right. So that right there just eliminates all what I've been through, and say that as long as you can find happiness and joy in all your circumstances, it really don't get the best of you. Well, that is good to hear that you're you're winning that battle, and we wish you continued good luck, Peter. Uh, certainly, that's the most important fight of your life, and I'm glad that you're winning that one. I uh, wish you luck against Jay Leah on Love uh, on Saturday, and look forward to talking to you again afterwards. Thank you, Kevin. God bless you. Be well, my friend.